Now, if you've been struggling to shallow out the club, I'm going to show you how this move, this start of the downswing move, is not only going to help you to finally shallow out the shaft, it's going to help you to get more lag, to compress the ball better, and to finally be able to open your hips, stay in your posture. So many things come down to this little right-hand move that I'm going to teach you here today. All right, so one of the questions that I get all the time is, Clay, I'm right-handed. There's a lot of things that I can't feel in the swing. I do feel like I have a good feeling of what my right hand is doing if I'm right-handed. If you're left-handed, just flip this around in reverse. Do everything we're going to say here, just to the opposite side of your left hand. But for the sake of this, most people are right-handed. Let's do the right-handed drill. Well, I've got a little, it's like a baseball training pad, I believe. Um, really, you don't need this at all. I'm just using it to demonstrate and show what this should be doing. So I'm going to jump on the wall here and go over the feeling that you need to have. So I'm going to be about a foot away from the wall. And what we can do for this video, let's go ahead and do a split screen with a face on and a down the line showing it the entire time. That way we can see from both angles and you really get a lot of detail that way. So from my foot to the wall is about a foot away from that, roughly. Get to where it's comfortable. And what I want to be able to do is turn what would be the top of my backswing and easily be able to place my hand on the wall. So if I get too far away from the wall and I'm like two feet away from it, I'm gonna have to lean if I get too close to it, I'm just really going to be cramped up. There's not going to be much room there. So about a foot away from the wall or so, 10 inches maybe. Turn to the top, and then I'm going to put this on the wall. Now let's get the spacing of this right. If I'm standing straight up and down, and let's imagine that there's a line going through the middle of my body here, I would put this about head high, so kind of how your hands, if you go to the top of the backswing, my hands are going to be roughly head high. And from there, instead of being in line with my body this way, here, it's actually going to be a little bit behind my right shoulder. So as I turn, my hands will go over my right shoulder, it would be about right there. So basically, it's just a little bit behind my body, about head high is the right way to put this pad on there. So again, to do this correctly, I'm going to let my hips turn. I'm going to let my shoulders turn. My head should feel like it's kind of on the inside of my right foot. I don't want to be hanging back here and all of a sudden I can't reach the wall and I've got a reverse pivot. This is also great for a reverse pivot where I turn into my right side, I put, place my hand on the wall and I'm right there in position. So it's kind of top of the backswing. Now from here, instead of having the fingers up and down pointing this direction, I'm going to rotate the fingers until they're pointing straight out in front of me. And the feeling I should have for shallowing with the right hand in the downswing is as my body opens, this turns to the right. So I'm going to feel like I turn my hand until this is at about a 45 degree angle. So you imagine this angle here, my fingertips are going to be pointing at that angle. So let's do that again. I'm in the backswing. I start my downswing and rotate the hand at the same time. Now you'll notice when I do this, look at my knees. They're staying nice and wide. I'm not collapsing into my left side. I'm keeping my knees wide and my knees are starting to point toward down the line. My hips are opening. My shoulders are starting to open too, but they're not all the way open like this. They're still about 45 degrees closed. That's going to allow me to keep this hand on the wall. Now from there, that's the shallowing move. That's the feeling you should be having to set this club on plane. If I did that with a golf swing, it would be this motion. Top of the swing, and as I start down, it's going to be that type of a motion. It's exaggerated, so I don't want you to have to do this much in a real swing, but when I show you how to pair it up with the rest of it, when you take a video of a swing when you're trying to do this, it's going to look exactly like you want it to look. So let's go back to the wall here again and get this really ingrained. I'm sitting up at the top, my fingers are here, I've opened my body, and I've started to get my fingers at this 45 degree angle going this way. My fingertips are pointed behind me. Now from there, like I said, my hips are opening, my shoulders are still fairly closed, and the only thing I'm going to do as I continue the downswing is I'm going to slide this pad at that 45 degree angle with my fingertips staying back as long as I can. So I want to have this bend in my right wrist. So we're looking from this angle, this bend in my right wrist as long as I can as I'm opening my body. That's what lag is. Most players get rid of that and start to cast that out a little bit as they continue their downswing. And that casting type motion is what gets this in there and I lose my lag. If I do this the correct way like I'm showing you, I'm going to be lagging the club the entire way down. So let's keep it going all the way to impact. 
Now, as I continue down, here I'm sliding it down. My hands are on the wall. I'm trying to keep my fingertips on the wall and it angled back at that 45 until I'm about waist high. Then from there, I'm gonna feel like again, this wrist is angled back and I'm gonna be petting the ground all the way through contact. So if I imagine I'm on the turf here, I'd just be swiping that turf with my right hand. That's what it feels like. Now, one reason I really like that is at the start of the transition here, I'm gonna have keep my hand on this wall, but as we talked about, I open my body. I can go ahead and squat down and get to my left, get my weight to my left. You'll notice how my arm goes from bent to being a little bit straighter because I'm getting off the wall with my body. I'm shifting to the left. As I continue down to do that, my weight is to my left. I'm closer to the ground. I'm not popping up out of my posture. And then from there, the feeling is now that I'm close to the ground, I can pet the turf. And then all I do in the finish to release that is let the hand fold back up. And if, again, if you can kind of imagine this 45 degree angle, I'm on it all the way down, petting the turf. And then from there, I'm letting it come back up on that 45 degree angle to finish my turn. All I'm really doing to finish my turn is going ahead, letting my legs drive me through it and my weight get onto my lead side. So my weight's on my front foot. I really rotate around my back foot is completely off the turf at that point. Give me about 15 or 20 reps and you'll be surprised when you do that, all of a sudden you're gonna feel this club way shallowed out. You're gonna feel like you have a ton of lag with this hand angle back. You're gonna feel like you stay compressed on this golf ball. It's almost like the ball melts into the face and as you extend through it, it's just sunk in the face the entire time and then just really shoots off there with a lot of speed and power. And the cool thing is, if you do this technique right, you really don't have to swing with tons of effort to get a lot of good ball speed. So I'm gonna have that same feeling here. Here's an eight iron. And I'm just gonna swing nice and smooth. So let's go ahead and have the same feelings I just had there. There we go, and that start out to the right, you can see it drawing back. And I hit 174 yard eight iron. I'm not even trying to feel like I'm killing the ball there. Let's get a little less shallow and get it slightly more straight. I exaggerate a little too much on that one. And that one is dead solid, 179 yards. I may not ever do any better than that. <laughs> that was pretty good. 179 yards with an eight iron, really felt nice and crisp because I'm coming into the ball and really applying a lot of pressure through it because I'm not flipping those hands and releasing all my angles. I'm here, I'm lagging, the ball sinking into the face and then it just explodes right off there. Now a perfect drill for this, a perfect complement for this is what I call the knuckle dragger. One of my all time favorite drills to get this low lagging feeling. And the cool thing is here, what I'm gonna show you in this next video, when your hands are in front of your right leg, you take every single PGA Tour player, every single one of them, and when they're hitting an iron, their club shaft is gonna be parallel to the ground when their hands are in front of their right leg. That's not a coincidence. That's this motion we just went over. That's getting those hands low and letting the club do the work to get you the speed letting the club do the work to get you that compression on there. And I really wanna show it to you, because I know if you take advantage of this and you start doing this in your swing, golf just gets a whole heck of a lot easier. I'm gonna play a preview of that video in here in just one second. Make sure you click the card that pops up on your screen. Don't miss this one, this is a very important video. Go ahead and click that now, you'll get full access to the video. If you don't see the card that pops up on your screen, don't worry, just go down to the link below in the description and you can get instant access there too. Best of luck and I'll see you in the knuckle dragger video. I got an awesome video for you. This one is what I call knuckle dragger. And this is one of the best ones, one of the big missing pieces to players that are struggling to get more lag. Now let's talk about when you lose lag, what's happening. A lot of times what's happening is as you make your downswing, if we're looking from this down the line view, what happens is my hips go toward the golf ball. They start to slide forward. My chest moves back away from this golf ball. So I'm getting farther away from the golf ball. And then all of a sudden I cast I flip and I don't have a lot of lag there. Well, look how far my hands are away from the ground. Also notice when I get my hands closer to the ground, so as my hands get lower, then what happens is they also go forward more. 
So as I want to have more lag, when you feel like your knuckles are dragging the ground, then that club is naturally going to lag back behind, and then you're going to release that out in front. When your hands are far away from the ground, well, if I had all that lag, where would I be swinging? I'd be swinging a foot over top of the golf ball. So you have to kind of flip, release that lag early to just make contact with the golf ball at all. So having those knuckles feeling like they're scraping the ground is really gonna be a big key. Now, another piece to this, again, when I talked about having, losing that posture, your hips go forward. You're gonna to wanna to feel like, as those hands scrape the ground, your knuckles drag the ground.